Welcome back. Well, the clock is inexorably ticking towards um, destruction, so we'd better get out of here. Does anything here have a smell? Three minutes. Kill detonation. Nope, it does not. So let's just uh, head on out. Fortunately, with the spacesuit, we are um, okay out here. Uh, without the spacesuit, it would have exploded. Which is not entirely scientifically accurate, but this is a Space Quest game. What did you expect? Beyond the yawning doors lies the serenity of deep space. This is the cavernous vehicle bay. An escape pod rests on launch rails at the end of the platform. Bay doors at the end of the rails allow access to the emptiness beyond. Take a look at the pod. A giant silver pill-shaped pod sits poised to fire, much like a bullet in the chamber of an ancient pistol. Some alien anchor being is broadcasting a message about the stolen star generator. Oh, we already saw that. Does anything here smell? I guess not, because, well, we are uh, wearing a spacesuit, which makes it very difficult to, wear, to smell things. These powerful Pyron Weiss pump drives propel the pod. Well, we better get in the pod and get out of here before we blow the hell up. Okay, um, let's see. Through the open bay doors, you can see a plethora of stars. This is your head. This is your head in a fishbowl. Oh. The inside of the Arcado's escape pod is not exactly packed with the luxurious appointments. However, when it comes to saving one's posteria, the pod is as good as it rolls. The survival kit contains the basics for deep space survival. You don't need that right now. Oh, okay. Um, the seat belt is dummy tested, which ought to suit you just fine. Well, something tells me it's a good idea to use that. Oh, well, let's see. Two. Get out of here. Nothing much will happen without power. Kill detonation. Oh. How about this thing? Three buttons. This is the auto nav button. When operative, it allows the pod to navigate to the closest habitable planet. This button is not to be pushed at any time. That's a challenge. This is the power button for the escape pod. Well, let's turn on the power then. And get the hell out of here! You slide the throttle forward. You can feel the arcada start to shake. Thus ends the giant space roasted chicken. But we made it in the nick of time. We're still alive, and um, we need to get so go somewhere. Because, well, dr being adrift in the middle of space and uh, in the middle of nowhere does not tend to uh, help your survival uh, chances. Unless somebody with an infinite improbability drive happens to be in the area. Dials galore populate the instrument console of the pod cabin. Does it smell like anything? No. I don't remember what does and does not smell, which uh, means I'll probably end up doing that a lot. Um, well, I want to see what that don't press button does. Maybe it'll just pop up a sign uh, saying don't press this button again. Let's see how many Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy references I can make during this game. Quite a lot. No, not LP4. Um, do not press. There. That should do it. Let's push the button. You have a feeling you shouldn't have pressed that button. Seems fine so far. Nothing wrong happening. Wait, what? It's a castle.
this doesn't look like it belongs in a Space Quest game. Ouch, I think we've got some serious organ damage here. All of them, of course, could be easily replaced in the time period from which you've just arrived. However, a quick scenery check reveals that you are now in the Dark Ages. The only transplant you'll get here is from Carcass to spit over flame. As you draw a few final lungfuls of oxygen through your newly acquired sucking chest wound, you gleefully notice your final resting place is near beautiful Nottingham Castle, universally renowned for its inclusion in Sierra's conquest of the Longbow. Oh my goodness, you're shocked to hear some highly inflammatory language making its way into your auditory canals. Must be some uncivilized ruffians in the nearby pub. Well, you're dead again. We even warned you not to push that button. You have no one to blame you but yourself for having to sit through a plug for another fine Sierra product. Maybe you'll follow directions next time. Thanks for playing and all that stuff. Yay! Sierra does like plugging their other games. I think in the original um, Space Quest 1, if you did this, you actually ended up in Daventry in King's Quest rather than Conquest of the Longbow. So I wonder why they didn't do that here. Uh, they could have just, uh, I don't know, let you end up in Daventry for King's Quest V or something. Which was made uh, before this game, just before this game. Oh well, for some reason they wanted to uh, plug Conquest of Longbow, I guess. Oh well, um, let's try the auto nav button instead this time. Might actually have uh, um, better results. That shows a diagram of a planet called Corona, which I think is a play on Corona, the Mexican beer. One thing I like is that the music is actually subtly different from when you push the uh, don't press button. Well, no time warps this time from the looks of it. Just a very um, Tatooine resembling planet. You call that a landing? Well, any landing you can walk away from. Although it remains to be seen whether we can actually uh, walk away from this one. Thank you for flying Arcada Getaway Pot Lines. It's nearly been a pleasure serving you. Tell a friend if you've got one. Hey, where'd the uh, survival kit go? This place does not look very friendly. Through the fractured pot window you see utter desolation spread out before you. You suddenly feel very lonely. Well, I guess we'd better get out. Which is a lot easier to do if you're not wearing a seatbelt. Do you think that if you weren't wearing your seatbelt you'd get smashed through the glass or something like that? Well, this is certainly uh, interesting. Loitering about the horizon is the second and closest moon of Corona. It is much less hospitable than the sphere you presently roam. And I'd say this one uh, is only barely hospitable, so it must be terribly bad then. In the distance rises a unique formation of mountains. They look to be hundreds of kilometers away. Either that, or they're actually just paintings in the distance put up by... Uh, Kadish. The engines seem to have performed their jobs well. They will now stand silent for eternity. The Paul's windshield is cracked, but beyond repair. The built-in plasti seal film between the glass layers managed to keep the shield in place, with one minor exception. Despite the shocks from the landing, if that's what you want to call it. That's interesting. And hey, that looks like the survival kit. The rocket landing liberated the survival kit from its mounted fixture. Or mounting fixture. Well, let's uh, take that with us. I mean, this looks like the kind of place where you'd need a survival kit now, don't you? Does this place smell like anything? No. Damn it. I want more funny smell messages. A survival kit. Well, what's in it? Upon opening the survival kit, you discover a Xenon army knife and a canister of dehydrated water. Dehydrated water? How the hell does that work? 
Oh well, best not to think about it. It's a Xenon army knife. The can label says Pelvitron Dehydrated Water, H2. There's actually just hydrogen then. All you do is add air. Makes 10 gallons. Caution, do not attempt to open or rupture container. Misuse could result in personal injury and or flash flooding. Okay, dangerous then. But, considering this place looks like a desert, uh, I'm guessing this will be a very useful thing to have. The game also tried to, uh, uh, try to draw our attention to this shard of glass. Right there. Oh, let's look at it first, actually. A chunk of the highly reflective windscreen rests on the sand at the front of the pod. It, along with your teeth, was jarred loose as a result of the landing's impact. Well, you uh, never know what that could be useful for. It's very, very reflective, apparently. It's that highly reflective piece of broken cockpit glass. So it is. Uh, we'll continue in the next video.